We are here at the North Gate Food Market in Chiang Mai, Thailand and we're going to find out if the cowboy hat lady from the Anthony Bourdain episode in Chiang Mai we're going to find out is she still here and if she is is her recipe as delicious as everybody says. Today we are here in Chiang Mai, Thailand and we're going to go on a culinary quest. Because a couple of days ago, I asked my followers over on Instagram, what did you want me to show you before I leave for my big adventure where I'm going to travel to every single province of Thailand? And you guys said that you wanted me to show you the places where I go to eat. And someone specifically asked me to go find out if the cowboy hat lady made famous from Anthony Bourdain's documentary show is if she's still there and uh, what the situation with the whole market scene is in Chiang Mai. So I thought, great idea, so let's go get some breakfast. Enjoy the sun. Okay. I'll also take us up to the mountains today as well after breakfast because I love going up there. It's the weekend and apparently something really special has just happened and it could be really, really cool. So let's go check that out as well after breakfast. <laughs> It's a nice sunny day as well, which is a bonus. Okay, welcome to Niman Heyman, or just Niman for short, or Niman if you're fancy. Let's go for breakfast in Niman, darling, because some of you have been asking me, hey, I'm thinking about coming to Chiang Mai to live in the future. You know, can you show us some sort of Western food? And uh, believe it or not, even though I live in Chiang Mai, I don't eat Thai food every day, all day. It's nice to have Western food sometimes. And thankfully, Chiang Mai has an incredible selection of Western foods. I'll take you to an incredible place, highly recommended by all the expats, all of the teachers, all of the digital nomads. It's in the hippiest, coolest part of the city. It's a little bit expensive, I must say. You know, you can just get a cheese and ham toasted from 7-Eleven for, you know, 30 baht. This breakfast might cost me 200 and more. But that's okay, I'll come and shake you there. It's a treat for me. Because I don't really go there that often. But since you asked, <laughs> I'll take you there. And then we'll go up the mountain. And then we'll go find out if the cowboy hat lady's there. It's an exciting day. And we are... Okay, welcome to Rustic and Blue. The best place to get breakfast. And it's closed. <laughs> it's closed for maintenance. <sighs> okay. Well, um, let's freestyle this. Well, this culinary quest is off to an epic start, but uh, never fear, because we are in literally food heaven. Now, I'm not really, if I'm honest, a big Western breakfast kind of guy. I kind of like to keep my breakfast quite light. And so Rustic and Blue is my only really, yeah, like choice in my head. That, like that one pops into my head that's in this area. The other places that I know that are really good are in the old city. And that's miles away from here. That's like at least 10 minutes. I just want to show you these cafes. Like just, just so you get a vibe of like what Chiang Mai's situation is. Just in case you didn't know, like look at this place here, Roastery Lab. Really nice cafe. Super cool. The kind of place that if you're gonna come and stay in Chiang Mai for three months, six months, come live here. You'll never get bored. You'll have a different place to get a coffee every day. You'll have lunch in a million different places. It's really picturesque. It's very, very, very hipster, you know? Um, we won't get Thai food on the street, because I did say we'd get Western food. But now, now I don't know where to go, guys. Let's just go down another random soy. <laughs> this is fun. Tuk tuk. And then we'll go. What's down here? Everyone has to come up with it. Oh, look, there's my dream bike. This is the uh, Honda CT125. Absolutely beautiful bike. 
my dream bike. We're just gonna eat at the first place we see or the first thing that smells good. Now look at that. We're gonna park here because I can smell something delicious and see smoke coming out of a smoker or some sort of barbecue. Now I know this doesn't look much, but this is probably gonna be epic. Okay, gr one grilled chicken. Yeah. And one somtam. Pet mate? Pet cap. Thank you. Here's the sum tum. <laughs> okay, wow, what a find this is. They're just like literally barbecuing and grilling that chicken on those wooden sticks in a pit of smoke. Like it's just charcoal and billowing smoke. They're just basically smoking this chicken. And then it comes with this incredible spicy chili sauce. Looks incredible. Looks like it's gonna blow my face off. Classic sticky rice, and it's still nice and hot inside this plastic bag. And then your staple, just a plain somtum. When he says uh, "peck mai," "peck mai," he's just saying, "Do you want it to be spicy? Is spicy okay?" They always check with foreigners. You know, this is spicy. Is that okay? And if you don't want it to be spicy, you just say, "My peck cap." Mai. Mai means no. And uh, if you want it a little bit spicy, just say Nick Noi Ka or Nick Noi Cap. Nick Noi means a little bit. But I like to say yes, give me Peck Mac. <laughs> I might regret that. Because this is really spicy and that is really spicy. So, And classic Coca Cola in a glass bottle. You just put them on the table and then you help yourself with a cup of ice. This is very Thai. I'm sorry to the people who asked me to show you to the best western places, but I tried to take it there, but it was closed. But this will do, eh? So let's start with a piece of chicken leg. Oh, yes. Delicious. Delicious. <laughs> can, you see, can you focus on the chicken? I oh, doesn't want to focus on the chicken. That's okay. Dip it in the sauce. Mmm, it's so smoky, very soft, mm. incredible, it's piping hot, mmm, you suck it off the bone, I'm literally sucking, I'm not biting, oh, careful, careful, that's how we do it. Amazing. Two sucks and it's gone. <laughs> and I love this, man. This is such a staple in Thai food. Sticky rice. You know it's good sticky rice when you can shake it. And it keeps the shape. OMG. I'm never going to be able to eat all this. Mmm. Mmm. Look at this. Look at this. Look at the stringiness. Look at that. Look at that chili sauce on there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> this is fun. Mmm!
doesn't have a name in English. I don't know what the sign says in Thai, but just look in the description. Save this to your Google Maps. I'll call it Fried Chicken Place. It's not fried chicken. Grilled chicken, barbecue smoked chicken place. I've got a bunch of leftovers. I've removed the bones because um, I'm going to go up the mountain and take you to this really cool special place. And, and halfway up, there's some dogs up there that really need some food. Every time I go up there, I'm like, oh, I wish I had some food for these dogs. And now I have some food for these dogs. I'll take you up to this mountain. We'll try and find some more food. And then again, don't worry, later on in the evening, we'll come back down to the town. We'll try and find this cowboy hat lady and see if she's still around and have another feast. <laughs> Road of Doi Poi. This is the mountain road on the big old mountain that overlooks Chiang Mai. Literally next to the city is a giant mountain. It's one of the biggest mountains in Thailand. And this beautiful road goes all the way up it. There's viewpoints just like this one. There's temples, there's waterfalls, there's campsites. You can spend the whole weekend just on this mountain. But we're, we're going to skip the temples and everything because this is a food adventure video. But I do want to show you this. Uh, this viewpoint for two reasons. Number one, I'm going to feed these dogs. Hello! And the second reason is, I'm going to show you something that's a bit sad, actually. And, uh, oh, there's nobody here, which is good. You'll see what I mean. These guys are so scraggly. And, uh, malnourished. They just live here, homeless, on this bend. And, uh, luckily, these ladies sell chicken and sausages and drinks and people normally park up, enjoy the view, but not today, you'll see why in a second. I was, honestly, I was only here like three days ago enjoying the view that has now, well, you'll see. <laughs> and uh, I'll just feed the other ones. Hey, buddy. Ooh, Ooh some yummy chicken. Yummy. Hello, mate. Okay, so this viewpoint, come up here and enjoy the beautiful views. Uh, although, to be honest, it's bright now. Three months of the year or four months of the year, the view is unfortunately just like this. Now, don't get confused. You might think, oh, that looks all right. What are you seeing there? That, that, that haze is blocking, firstly, a huge expanse view of all of the districts of Chiang Mai. Not just the city and the airport over there, but the whole province basically in that valley you can see. But now it's hidden. And then the sad part is where my finger is now, it should be like zigzagging around the giant mountains that 360 the whole of the city. This is one of the mountains, the biggest one uh, that overlooks the city. And this is just like 25% of the way to the top. Three weeks ago, I was a short drive from here in Lampang, and you can see this footage. You can see how clear the air was, how fantastic the views are. That's what it's like normally in Chiang Mai, except for the smoky season, which is approaching. This is not even <laughs> the start of it. It gets way worse. I'll make a video about the smoky season, because before I go on my big adventure around the whole of Thailand, just before I leave, we will be in the middle of the smoky season, so I'll show you how terrible it gets. So this is actually just, yeah, this is about 10% of how bad and toxic this beautiful city becomes because of the smoky season. Now there is a reason why I'm taking you up the mountain. The first one is we're gonna try and find some food and some, some coffee. I'm not too hungry, obviously, <laughs> uh, but there is a really special reason. Bye bye doggies. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. There is a really special reason I'm taking you up here. I've never experienced the top of the mountain at this time of year and there's something spectacular that's just happened. And I have a hunch that it's going to be absolutely packed up there for this special reason and because it's Saturday. And normally there's nobody on this road and it's honestly it's really busy. It doesn't look like it. But well, this is really busy, so let's go up to the top of the mountain and let me show you something beautiful. 
Yes, we kept on driving up the mountain, stuck behind lots of traffic because the special thing that's happening at the top of the mountain is the cherry blossoms are in full bloom, bright pink and purple colours. The whole mountain lights up at this time of year and it's only a few weeks of the year, so of course everyone comes up and, well, the Instagram game is pretty hard up here. So yeah, this is the campsite here at the top of Doi Poi. Actually, you go to the summit and then you go around the back. It's beautiful and you can see the blossom trees are in full bloom. The Thai people are up here camping, setting up camps. Most people are just up here taking pictures. That's okay. And uh, I just love the way Thai people camp. And uh, actually, I can see something quite interesting here. These people are making their own coffee in a cool way. Let's check this out. Thai people camp in such a cool way. Look, they're making coffee. Look how they're making coffee. <laughs> if this was England and this was like, you know, six 22 year olds, we'd have our speaker blasting tunes, we'd be drinking beers, causing a light tear up. Look at this, this is so nice and calm. What kind of a camera is this? Film. Wow, look at that. Very nice. Got some fried chicken. <laughs> Hello, I may. <laughs> Boil the water on this stove. He's got a press. I want to camp with you guys. <laughs> By the way, if you're going to camp here, just go to the ranger station up there, and they will give you the tents are already set up, and then you rent like a sleeping bag, you rent a, a mattress, you, you rent a pillow. I think with the tent and everything that you need, it's about 15 US dollars. If you keep going a couple more kilometers, there's a little hill tribe. And I know for a fact there's a coffee shop there. And maybe we can get a little bit of something to eat. So let's go up just a little bit more. Oh my gosh, and look, the first place you, you come to is this old man. Hello. Sawadika. And it's 10, can it, can it, this guy? It's 10 baht for three uh, shots of the crossbow. How did you aim? Did you aim up or did you aim? Right at the target though. Okay. Guava hunter. Guava <laughs> hunter. Take the last one. Oh. Can I get the guava? Wow! Hey! <laughs> Sniper! Yes, welcome to a very beautiful traditional Hmong tribe, but not so much a typical day. I've been up here many times and it's always very quiet and peaceful, but not today. And the Hmong tribe people actually come from China and over the hundreds of years of history, they've had to escape famines and, and conflicts during Chinese dynasties. And you can find Hmong tribes dotted all over Southeast Asia, Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, just wherever they decided to call home to escape whatever it was they were escaping back in the day. And they look different, they dress different, they have a different dialect, and they're very cute people. And uh, the Thai people love to come up here, take pictures, and on a day like today, but the cherry blossoms, it was on overload. I really like this lady. <laughs> She's taking a picture with the tree with no blossoms on it. She's obviously taking a piss, very funny. Pink blossoms, the rustic vibes, the good coffee and the beautiful views. Shame about the smoke, you can't see the city in the distance there, there's just a haze. But uh, yeah, what we'll do is I'll head down 
I'll take my time, I'm gonna chill, enjoy the afternoon at my house, and then we'll pick it up at the night market and we'll go to the North Gate Night Market in Chiang Mai, Old City, and we'll go check out, firstly, is she there? Is the cowboy hat lady still there? And if she is, what's the state of the situation there? Is her food as good as it seems? And uh, maybe we can get to chat to her if she's there, I don't know. Hello, mate. Aroi, ka, huan. Ben pan huan. Let's go. Okay, by your request, we are here at the North Gate Food Market in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And we're gonna find out if the cowboy hat lady from the Anthony Bourdain episode in Chiang Mai, we're gonna find out is she still here? And if she is, is her recipe as delicious as everybody says? Okay, so just before we go over and we'll find out if she's still there, I'm gonna get a quick drink from 7-Eleven. And I'm gonna explain to you in case you don't know what the hell we're talking about. You might be watching this going, what is this cowboy hat lady? What are you talking about? I'll explain in a second, but yeah, let me just get a quick drink. <laughs> I can't go into 7-Eleven, I don't have a mask. Okay, so the cowboy hat lady is famous because, many reasons, number one, her food's delicious. Number two, she was really uh, famous with Chinese people. I think she was on Chinese TV as well. But anyway, Anthony Bourdain, rest in peace. He was an incredible food critic and presenter of TV shows based around food and travel. Awesome guy and he made an entire episode in Chiang Mai and featured her prominently and uh, since then every foreigner and every follower of the budgeteers um, who's ever messaged me saying oh I'm coming to Chiang Mai can we get beers half of them say and can we go get food at the uh, cowboy hat lady and I've met a few of the subscribers from the budgeteers right here and we've had we've shared pork knuckle together but uh, anyway that's who she is and uh, yeah, let's go, let's go find out if she's there. Hold on to your butts, because we're here. And I've got some good news, and I've got some bad news. So, good news is, food's still here, and it looks delicious. <laughs> and I'm gonna taste it in a second. Bad news is, she's not here. Now, there is a reason for that. I just asked her. That is just an employee. She still owns it. She still comes here and chops up the meat and serves the food, and serves her secret recipe, but not all the time. I think she can kind of just chill now. Maybe she's retired, semi-retired. This place is busy every single night, every single day. So she's probably, you know, making a few coins. And she probably thinks, I don't have to work every day, all day. So apparently she mainly just comes late at night, in the last few hours. And, uh, yeah, so she's still here. The food is still here. But, uh, she's not here right now. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, you come to a place like this to see her, don't you? Uh, firstly, because, you know, she's famous, oh my god. Uh, and secondly, you come to try food. Now, you're probably thinking, hey Paddy, didn't you eat this in the last video? Well, I ate in a different restaurant, but it was the same dish. For those who don't know, this is pork knuckle, which is stewed in Chinese master sauce. Now, that master sauce, that's the secret. She has a very special recipe. Hmm. I'm just thinking I should have a more happy face, you know? Do a Mark Weens. <laughs> what was that? But anyway, in all seriousness, the pork knuckle that I had a few days ago in the last video was delicious, but this is on a whole nother level. The infusion of the meat and the flavor of the sauce. 
Next level. The pickled, what are they called again? Mustard greens. <laughs> oh, little trade secret. I've always just called this pickled cabbage. And then I Googled this dish and I was like, oh, mustard greens. It's a basic, it's a type of lettuce. I have to say that the, uh, the boiled eggs aren't like boiled to perfection. Normally they soft boil them just so that when you cut into them, the oak, the oak, the yolk spills out everywhere. But they kind of overcook these. But the meat, I mean, who cares, it's just an egg. But the meat, the Chinese master sauce is basically a rich meat gravy that they put in star anise, cinnamon, loads of different spices. And then they pour some of that sauce on top of all of the dish just before they serve it. Yeah, it's basically like a, like a gravy. I did completely forget about this epic chili sauce, which is not like me. I'm like, I'm eating this thinking, I swear this was supposed to be spicy, but then it's because I forgot to put the chili sauce in it. How's it taste now? Mmm. Oh. What was I doing eating it before the chili sauce? Oh yeah. Now we're talking. There's heat involved. There's spiciness to it. Mm. That was a chili seed. Delicious. So I just want to say thank you to one of my followers on Instagram who told me, hey, go check out if the cowboy hat lady is still there. Actually, there was a few of you. A few of you mentioned her. And I was like, actually, that's a good idea for a video. And then we had such an adventure today up on the mountain with the fail, with the breakfast, which turned into a victory. A beautiful day on the mountain. Finishing it off with this. Mm. Let's get some more of that chili bad boy. Thailand's gone through some stuff and continues to go through a lot of hardships. But Thai people will always want to have this delicious food. And the cowboy hat lady, although she's not here tonight, lives on. And I wish I had a cold beer. I can't believe I forgot my mask. <laughs> oh, I'm full. And if you liked this video, don't forget to hit like. And if you're new, you should definitely subscribe because we're about to go on an epic adventure on my little Honda dream. In a couple of months, I'm planning to quit my job, sell all my possessions, and we are gonna go travel around Thailand. We're gonna try to go to every single province of Thailand. So this is just the beginning. This is just me practicing my vibes and trying to get my camera settings and ironing out all the tweaks and things. So anyway, I'm gonna go home and sleep off all that food. I hope you had a good time watching the video. And uh, yeah, stay tuned, because me and Dreamy here, we're gonna have some good times. See you in the next one.